I have two questions for you. One, are you stuck in a job where you just don't feel like you enjoy it anymore? It doesn't give you satisfaction. You don't feel fulfilled. And two, have you been considering a career as an actuary for a while now, months or maybe even years, but you still haven't made that final decision that you're actually going to pursue it? If you answered yes to both those questions, then this video is made for you. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. And today I'm here to give you a perspective on this situation that you may have not thought about before. And honestly, it might not be one that you like, but I know that I am doing this for you. I'm doing it so that you can have an overall better life. And even if I change the mind of one person and convince them to change their career path, then I will have done my job. And that's what this video is going to hopefully do for you. So let me start with a story. And I promise you this story is going to be relevant, even though it might not seem like it at first. Okay, so let's go way back 13 years ago now. I was in high school. I was just a young girl deciding what I wanted to do with my life. I had friends that I hung out with all the time. I was happy and I was working hard towards my career goals as well. At that time, I knew I wanted to be an actuary. I was actually planning to head off to the University of Waterloo in just about two or three months after this particular story started happening. So that is when I met this guy. I know, you didn't expect it to go there, did you? I met a guy. Now, like I said, I was in high school just trying to figure things out for myself. I didn't really have much experience dating anyone in the past and he asked me on a date. So I said, yes, he seemed like a nice guy. I didn't have any reason to say no. So we went on a date. I really didn't have any expectations. Like I said, I hadn't really dated a lot of people before him. So I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know what boyfriends should do and how they should treat the partners that they with. I just didn't know. I was inexperienced. So we kept going on some more dates and things started to get a bit more serious. Eventually we became boyfriend and girlfriend and in the first year of us dating I saw some red flags that I just didn't really like but I chose to ignore them. I was someone that didn't want to complain. I just wanted to go with the flow because I just wanted this guy to still keep liking me, right? I didn't want to create a whole bunch of problems in the relationship. Then a little bit of time went by. I ended up going to university university. I stayed in residence first year, so I was gone for long periods of time. And even during that period, I started to see more red flags. Didn't matter. I kept going with this relationship. We ended up moving in together. We got an apartment that we rented together. And during that time, I saw more red flags. We would disagree on things a lot. We fought a lot of the time. It was kind of making me unhappy in my life, but still, I kept going, I pushed through. I just kind of put my head down and put blinders onto the situation, and I just stuck with this guy. Eventually, we kept on dating. We moved into a house together. It was just a rented house, so we didn't actually go ahead and buy a house, but we rented a whole house together. And this was seven years into the relationship, and I told you that that less than a year into it, I was seeing red flags. There were things that stood out that I didn't like. When we were in the house living together, there were times we fought a lot. Actually, we fought probably every single week, every, maybe daily, I don't know, but we fought a lot and I was not happy. And we kept on doing the same thing. We even broke up many times, but got back together. 10 years later, we were still together. I was not happy in this relationship. I was not having fun. It was not fulfilling to me. I was not enjoying it. And yes, this is going to be relevant, I promise. So during that time, resentment kept building up. I was getting more and more frustrated. And one day I finally just exploded. I couldn't handle it anymore. I was so unhappy and it was so frustrating to me all these things that we were fighting about and I just couldn't handle it anymore so we eventually broke up once and for all the final time we did not get back together so two things here one is that yes I know what I did was silly I shouldn't have stuck in that relationship for as long as I did especially when I was seeing red flags very early on two is that I did it because I was comfortable in that situation I 
liked the consistency. I didn't want to go through the changes that would have to happen in order for me to get out of that situation. It would have been so hard for me and it was so hard when we broke up because going through that change meant that my whole life was changing. I had been with him for 10 years. So basically I settled for something that did not make me happy only because I didn't want to go through the pain and all the changes that came with breaking up with this guy. But here is why this story is relevant to you. The career that you have now is kind of like the boyfriend that I used to have. You probably chose that career way back many years ago, maybe before you were even in university or in your early university years. You didn't know what you liked at that time. You didn't know how you wanted to spend the next 50 years of your career. It was just based on what you knew at the time and you did the best you could at that time, the best skills you had to choose the career that you ended up going into. And that's what I did with my boyfriend. Like I said, I didn't have experience dating other people in the past. So I just went with what I thought it was supposed to be like. I went with the best choice for me at that time. I used my own experience that I had and just went ahead with it. And now you are in the same situation. You are sticking in a career or a job that you just don't love. A career that is not giving you the satisfaction, the fulfillment that you wanted. It's a job that you picked way back in your earlier life. But now you are seeing in your adult life that there is a career that you might like better. A career that's going to make you happier, more fulfilled in your life. A career where you can have career opportunities and advance in your career. It's a career where you will be able to do the things that you actually love to do in your life today. Maybe it's different than way back then. That's okay. We change as people. We change all the time. And what is good for you back then or what was good for you might not be the same thing that's good for you now. And it's okay to change. And you might be choosing right now to forego your dreams, forego a career that will actually make you happy, one that is financially freeing for you, something that you physically and mentally will like to do. And you might be doing that because you're scared to try, you're scared to fail, you could fail. It's not familiar to you. You don't know what exactly to expect. So you might be sitting in this comfort job right now instead of moving to a career that you will absolutely love just because you are letting fear hold you back. And it's all subconscious. It's not anything that you are doing on purpose or that you even may realize until right now that you are doing. But, and I'm not saying this is absolutely 100% what you're doing, but subconsciously it may be that you are just scared, just like I was to get out of the situation that you're in and move on and go through that change and the pain that's associated with it so that later on you can have a life and a career that you are so much more happy in. That's exactly what happened to me. Once I got out of that relationship that I wasn't happy in, it opened up my eyes to so much more. It was 10 over like 15 years after I initially met that guy and now I am in a relationship that I'm very happy with, something I never could have even imagined in the past because I wasn't even aware that someone this perfect for me could exist. And the same is true potentially for you in a career that is different than the one you are in now. I'm not necessarily saying that it's an actuarial job that is going to make you feel that way, but it's important to realize that maybe you are letting fear, anxiety, familiarity hold you back from going after those big dreams that you have so that you can have a life that you are more happy in, a life that you enjoy living every single day instead of dreading going to work every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're probably dreading every single one of those days because you have to go into work and you don't love it. I know it is not going to be easy easy to make this change. It's not. You're going to have to spend more time if you want to get into the actuarial career at least. You're going to have to spend time studying. You might have to spend some time away from family that you might otherwise spend with them. But it's going to have so many more benefits too. And remember this isn't something that you have to do overnight. This is something that takes time and even if you just dedicate one hour to it a day, at least you are making progress to living the life that you really want and getting the career that you 
really want. Now, I may be wrong, but I doubt that you really want to continue on in your life doing these things that you dread doing all the time, going to a job that you don't love and a job that just doesn't fulfill you. So think about it really hard. Is this something that you are willing to do so that you can eventually have the career that you want, the life that you want? Is it worth it? If it's worth it, then you have to go for it because I know that you don't, at least I'm assuming, you don't want to spend the next 20, 30, 40, however many years it is in a job that you aren't loving. It's something that you have to do every single day. You may as well love it and you have a lot of time ahead of you and the sooner you make this switch, the better things are going to be in your life overall. You 100% have the ability to change this and it's all in your control. What you need to do is just make that decision that you're actually really going to do it. And if you do by chance want to really pursue the actuarial career, and again, this video is not to convince you to go into the actuarial career. All this video is trying to do is to make you realize that fear might be holding you back from achieving the life and the career that you really want. And if that career is an actuarial career, then there are so many ways that we can help you. The first thing that you should do is go watch my video all about the steps that you need to take in order to give yourself the best possible chance of getting an actuarial job. I will link it down below in the description and up here, wherever it goes. And that is all for today's video. I hope it gave you a different perspective and made you consider things that you might have not thought about before. Really, that was the purpose of this and I do hope that it achieved that goal. Okay, that is all. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.